What is mapping? I'm going to show you guys a little bit more about what it is and why you might want to get into it. So the idea of mapping is they've given us all the tools you need. All the tools you need to make whatever you think of. All these crazy maps that people have made and you can turn anything you like, your favourite films, your favourite ideas, whatever you want, into a map that has zombies in it. And I, d I don't know anything cooler than that. You don't really need any skill to start mapping. All you need is an idea and the determination to watch tutorials and learn how to do things so go out there grab yourself a copy of black ops 3 if you haven't already and go to steam and i'm going to walk through all the basics right now for you guys the first thing is if you go to library and go down to where it says tools you'll see call of duty black ops 3 mod tools you can right click and do install next thing you're going to want to do is go to view downloadable content and go onto this dlc tab and here you'll find the additional assets you want to check this option and it should ask you if you want to install the additional assets and that's how you install the additional assets and you're going to want that because then you'll have more models more textures and, and more everything really so the next thing you want to know is you're going to have launcher on your desktop and if you don't you want to go to where it's installed which will be your call of duty route which is in your steam library steam apps common call of duty route and if you go to the bin folder you'll have all of these different things here you can make a shortcut for the launcher put it anywhere and you're going to be using the radian mod tools but anyway you can get everywhere from the launcher here's the launcher here i've got it looking like this because i have an option here called used theme so yours might be white but you can go to edit go to option and do used theme the first thing you're going to want to do is click on this new document here and go to zm mod level and do zm underscore and then you can call it whatever you like you might want to make a map that's at c so you can call it zmc and then hit ok and it's going to make that file so there we go and if we see it here you can click on it and then right click and do open in Radiant. I've already opened my map in Radiant, so you'll see it here. And I'm gonna give you a quick run through of a load of commands that you're most likely to use. There's F6 mode, which is gonna view the map in very simple terms. It won't render active textures or effects or anything like that. It's much more memory efficient way of using Radiant. There's F7, which is the same as F6, but it's got more shading and everything. And then there's F8, which is it's much more intensive view because it renders effects and it renders lights but it's a more realistic view of seeing your map and then there's the final view which you'll be using which is f9 f9 is the game view it's going to take out all of those extra little details like the pink box around this and the black line around a prefab effects and you see the script structs none of those are going to be visible because you wouldn't see them in game therefore you won't see them when you have f9 selected and you'll see a little game view up here on the top right corner the next thing is you might see that everything you're looking at right now might be in different places where well, you can just hold the top of any panel so you can drag top and move it to the left or you can drag it and if you move it to the middle it's going to go in the same place if you move it to the bottom it's going to go underneath if you move it to the top it's going to go above it and yeah to just add it into a place you put it in the middle so that's how I've moved it around. Or you can even move it onto a different monitor if you have more than one monitor. And I, I usually have everything like this and I find it easier in this view. And to move around in your map, you're gonna be using the right mouse button. And if you hold it down you, and move the mouse, you'll see that you can move around. And the next thing is if you hold control, you can change the elevation of your camera. And then when you hold shift as well as control, you can change the rotation of the camera. Okay, if you want to know more about moving, I actually have a tutorial on that that you can go check out. Okay, the next thing is, you're going to be using this grid view on the left quite a lot for a number of reasons. One is, you're going to use it to make sure everything is leveled correctly. Two, you can create brushes in the grid view. So all you have to do is make sure you have nothing selected. You can press escape to deselect something. Then you can drag on this screen and you're going to see it's going to create this brush here. And if you don't have these manipulating handles, you can press P and go over to selection and make sure this manipulator handles is checked and then do apply and okay. Okay, the next thing you're gonna be working with is the textures window. So you can press T for Tango and apply any of these textures. You can filter, you can actually create your own ones later on and you can apply them by double clicking on them. 
The next thing is, if it's not showing the lines around the object, you can press J for Julia, and that will show you the lines around an object that's selected. The, the reason for not showing them is usually for blending. So you see around here where I have, I have three textures, actually no, I have four textures here in the same place, and you bring them through at different levels to make it look more realistic. So that's too tall. How do we change the size of it? You can actually change where the grid view is looking. So at the moment we're looking down on the world and you can hold control and press tab and it's going to change the grid view to the side so now we can go like this and if we change the view again it's going to be looking lengthways and then we can go and change it around there and then you press control tab again and it will go back to the top down view the next thing you want to know is you should be working with the grid so if we go over somewhere where there isn't something made you can see here we have these squares if we try and draw an objects you see that they're not going to line up very well because we have a very small grid on this isn't very helpful for when you're trying to make things you can press from numbers one to eight on your keyboard to change the grid size so if we go to grid size five you can see that it's only allowing us to draw brushes that are at least 16 inches wide and the other thing to notice is when you manipulate them it only follows that grid as well and once you've made an object you can change the grid to adjust it as you like let's go back to grid size four and grid size five Grid size four and five is what you want to be working with when you're building stuff. And then you want to go further down just to add in more detail. The reason for this is when you're working in grid four and five and you start building more and more stuff, it makes it very easy to get the layout working well and to have the pathing good for the zombies. So if you make something too narrow, it's not going to allow the zombies to walk through without getting stuck. So you want to make sure you have at least 64 inches for the zombies to be traveling in. You can select multiple things by holding shift and left clicking and it also deselects them as well. You can right click and select the object there because if you have more than one object in the same place and you want to pick a specific one, you can do so with this menu. Then you want to use backspace to delete objects and to select just the face of an object, you can do control shift left click. And this way you can apply different textures to different faces of the same object. So these objects here are called brushes and they're great and all. And you can do some pretty cool stuff where you can cut them to make them into anything you like really. But you're not always going to want to be using these. The first thing I will show you is how you cut them. So if you hold control and you click in two places with the right mouse button, it will put these blue dots on the grid view. You can then move these blue dots with the left mouse, put them where you like. And then when you want to cut the object, you can hold shift and press enter and that will cut the object. Then we can delete that and see that we have a new face on the object and it's been changed okay so the next thing is how do we make terrain so you're gonna to want to make a brush first and the next thing you want to do is make sure you're looking at the face in the 2d view which you wish to turn into a terrain patch if we're looking from the side it's going to turn this side into a terrain patch what we want to do is look from above and then do patch terrain simple terrain patch and you can select these options here. If you want to know more about patches, you can go on my terrain patch video and it will tell you much more about how you edit these patches because you can use the Y tool, which is the advanced patch editing tool to paint the height on the terrain and make it look really cool. Blends, which I spoke about briefly here, which is having multiple textures on the same layer and then bring them through at different heights to give off a different feel on the terrain. Then there are effects, which are active animated objects that allow you to add a bit more depth to your map. So in this case, I've got some fog here and some fire to make it look like this creepy tree is on fire and this creepy tree is something custom as well you can actually go on the internet and go to a variety of different websites to get free models one of them is turbo squid there are many other model art archives out there that give you free models and with the right licenses too okay the next thing you want to know is setting up zones setting up zones is very important you have these pink boxes around in fact you have boxes around the map everywhere so i'm just going to bring these back you see you have a sky which coats 
the entire game and this is important because everything that you want to render in your map has to be within the sky volume otherwise it won't render properly whenever you extend your map out you're going to want to extend the sky box out and the sky box is going to be the biggest box in your map that's it there selected and you can see it encasing everything and i'm going to hide it the next one in is the sun volume and this is the settings for what it looks like from inside your map. So if we go inside the map and look up, we've got this evil tree looking place and that's the skybox that I've selected. What you can do is on any object, you can press N for November and you'll bring up all these different options and these are called KVPs, key value pairs. They're called key value pairs because there are two bits of data. One is the name of the key and it's on the left. And in this case, we're looking at SSI one. And then the second thing is the data of the value. So the value, in this case, it's MP underscore 3104. You'll probably have default day if you've just made a map because that is the default one that's given to you but you can change what it looks like so you can click on the three little dots and you can apply pretty much any of these different sky boxes and it's going to bring in a new setting for your map and you want to change this to something that makes the most sense for your game so you can see in this case it's a sort of deserty area it's a pretty cool one actually anyhow i'm going to change it back because i had one that i liked and just add more detail and make your map a bit more interesting you can search through these. So if we search for building, for example, you see all these different building or building part that you can use in your map. One thing is to note, most models do not have clips. When you bring in a model, you're gonna to wanna to create a clip. And if you don't know what a clip is, you wanna go check out my special textures tutorial, which tells you everything about what clips are. We've changed the skybox. You come further down, there's a, f there's a couple other boxes, but you don't really need to worry about those yet. The next thing is you have these volumes. You only have one to begin with, and that's the start zone. These are special things that let the game know where your player is. Setting up zones is perhaps not the funnest task. However, a map with a whole load of zones and set up correctly is a much better map than one which doesn't have multiple zones because zombies will spawn much more intelligently and they won't be running from further away. So the game's gonna be a much more fast paced and interesting than one with only one zone. And if we look at the key value pairs, there's a shortcut which is N November on your keyboard. If you wanna know more about blending and how you make areas look better like if we just look at this on its own you'll see that it's just one texture and it doesn't look so great but then we can add detailing to it and make it look a bit more interesting go check out the tutorial i made it's one that's on blending and it walks you through everything on how to blend easily anyway this sums up this video i hope this has helped you out just remember that you can turn any of your crazy ideas into a really cool map with a bit of time and a bit of know-how don't worry the more you map the more you'll pick up before you know it you'll be able to make whatever you want pretty quickly let me know if you have any questions just put them down below go check out the videos i mentioned because there's a lot more stuff to to let you know about mapping and i will bring out some more videos soon and yeah, good luck with mapping. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care. See ya. Bye.